This is the Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. Welcome to the Wealth Ability Show, where we're always discovering how to make way more money and pay way less taxes. Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright, your host, founder, and CEO of Wealth Ability. So we have, in my memory, not since I was a little tiny kid in the 60s, uh, do I remember uh, a world that was in such a volatile, tumultuous state as we are right now. Um, we have uh, social um, instability. We have political instability. We have health instability. I mean, there's so many instabilities. You go, where do you even start? And what I hear the most of is, is that question, what do I do? I mean, where do I even begin uh, to get a handle on this? You know, we just spent a year in a pandemic and we're starting to come out of it, but it seems like it, the world's not coming out of it. And it seems like politically we're far from out of it. And so what we're, what we're gonna discuss today and I, what I hope we'll learn today is really how to handle that volatility around us um, that we can't change and by changing our behavior. And with that, we have a behavioral scientist with us, a specialist in this area, Katie Milkman from the Wharton School of Business, uh, certainly a very prestigious uh, university's prestigious school. And uh, it's just great to have you here, Katie. And if you would, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what brings you into this field. Yeah, no, I'd be delighted to. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, I'm a professor at the Wharton School. Uh, I study the science of change. Um, my background is in uh, both economics and computer science, also some psychology blended into my work, and I co-direct the Behavior Change for Good Initiative, which is an interdisciplinary research center that tries to advance oh, wow. um, research on this topic. So that's just a little bit about me. And I, I wrote a book called How to Change that's coming out on May 4th. Awesome. Very so exciting. So I'm, I'm excited about that. <laughs> How to change. I, I love that. So um, because... I mean, if we're going to improve, we're going to change, right? And But what we want to be careful of is we don't want to change as a result of everything around us. We want to be the causation of whatever changes we make, right? We want to be um, purposeful about the changes we make. And so one of the questions I have right off the bat is um, we talk a lot in WealthAbility about strategy, having a plan of action, really being very focused and centered on what we're doing. Uh, when you talk about change, Katie, how important is having that center and that focus and really being centered uh, to being able to deal with change and then make constructive change? Yeah, I love that question. I love your focus on strategy because that is really the core message of my decades of research and of my book is that one of the reasons that when we wanna make purposeful change, as you put it, which is a great, way of, of explaining it, uh, rather than change that just sweeps us away, purposeful change towards a goal. Um, one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they don't approach it strategically the way we, you know, would approach trying to win a sports game, for instance. Um, too often, we sort of reach for a shiny strategy that, that, uh, that isn't suited to our opponent, if you will. So um, there's all sorts of gurus out there telling you, you know, just visualize success or set big audacious goals. But um, a problem with most of the things that they're offering is that they don't actually take into account what is the specific obstacle that you need to overcome to achieve the change you're trying to achieve and then surmount that obstacle. They're, they're like a one size fits all. And, you know, it's quote unquote a strategy, but it's not a strategy in the sense that it doesn't, it doesn't recognize the obstacle that needs to be surmounted. So that's really what the book is about. And what science has shown me is that that is absolutely critical to making progress. I'm happy to get into some of the, the obstacles and strategies, but um, I love that high level. Well, so, so let's talk about personal obstacles, because to me, uh, one of the things I've learned over the years um, is that uh, the best way to improve things financially, personally, uh, business-wise is to improve me and, and, and to really do that personal in introspection to make sure that I'm solved, that I'm centered. I'm a big fan of yoga, a good, big fan of, uh, you know, of really being centered. Um, how, how much of a role does being really that 
our strategy of taking care of ourselves and focusing on who we are, how do you, how much do you think that plays in how we deal with those obstacles? I think it's really important. I mean, right. There's a lot of luck in life. There's a lot of variability to what comes your way, what the world throws at you and all you can control is how you deal with it and how prepared you are. And so um, getting those things right and, and laying the foundation so that you're as, as well prepared as you can be to deal with those ups and downs, it's, it's the best we can hope for. So let's talk about that foundation. I, I, I love the word foundation. Um, what type of foundation, when you look in your work, uh, what, what type of foundation or are you suggesting in, in your book or in your studies um, that people create in order to have that stability. You know, I think about a foundation. I think about building a building, right? You start with the, you start with the, the foundation. And if you have a bad foundation, then the building's going to fall down. You know, you, it's never going to, it's never going to look right. You're going to have cracks, et cetera. You, it's going to, you're going to need to repair it on a regular basis. But if you have that strong foundation, then it's pretty easy to build from there. How does that work in our personal lives? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, well, there's a lot, it, you know, it depends a little bit on what you're worried it's lacking in your foundation. But one thing that I think is really important and commonly overlooked is the importance of the, the social foundation um, that you create. So uh, the people who we surround ourselves with and the, the people um, we, we choose to try to pursue our goals with and, and spend time talking to are really, really important to our success. They show us what's possible. They, they either support us in our dreams and, and tell us they believe in us, or they can also rip us down or they can show us, you know, what's not possible, all the, all the bad things that can happen. And I, so I think being really thoughtful about who we choose um, to spend time with and also how um, we learn from them is important. So one study that I particularly love to point to on this topic is just a really simple analysis of how your college roommate that you're randomly assigned to live with freshman year changes your own GPA. And it turns out that if by the luck of the draw, you end up with a college roommate who is did worse on the verbal SAT, your grades suffer. Likewise, if you end up with someone who did better, your grades improve. So, um, you know, there's lots of research like this. If you spend time around people who save more in their 401ks, uh, you're more likely to save more and so on. So uh, choosing those people carefully and then looking for ways we can emulate what's working for people who are good role models in our lives can be incredibly, incredibly important. Now that makes sense. So I was a uh, I was Mormon missionary for two years when I was uh, 19, 20, 21, and uh, in Paris, France. And you didn't get wow. to choose who your companion was, so you're thrown in with them. And <laughs> I think everybody who's ever had that experience uh, with uh, you know either a, a, as a missionary or in the military or something else, the people that you're around uh, really do have such a big impact on, on not just your success, but you know, how, how happy you are. And there's so much uh, about that. But let's talk. Well, one thing that we talk about is having a team. So, you know, you mentioned have these people around you. There's a lot of people that say, well, if you're going to do it right, you have to do it yourself. And uh, I'm a big believer that if you're going to do it right, you're going to get somebody who knows how to do it better than you do, um, <laughs> because I don't know that much. So I'm going to have, have a lot of people who, don't, who know um, things that I don't know. But have you have you looked at that into how does how does the team let's say whether it's a business team or a financial team or whatever whoever those people are around you that are focused on your goals uh, how important is it to not just be on your own but to have other people surrounding you that's a great question. Yeah, it's it's one. So mostly I study individual decisions, but I'm at a business school and surrounded by uh, people who study groups and teens. So I, I've soaked up a bit of their knowledge on this over the years. One of the things I find most interesting um, is that it turns out for team success um, and for team creativity in particular, that having a diverse set of people who bring really different ideas and different perspectives is incredibly important, not just a group of talented people. Of course, you know, the higher quality your teammates, the better. But if they bring different perspectives, that strengthens you uh, because you know each one then has something new to offer and you have complementary skills rather than overlapping ones. So, so looking for teams that can support you in that way, I think is also incredibly important. And, and we often look to surround ourselves with people who remind us of ourselves, right? We're, oh, like, you know, we went to the same college. We have the same interests. We studied the same major. I love this person. But it's actually really important to seek out those. I love your humility 
ability, people who know more than you do about different things and, and to bring in that diverse portfolio of perspectives. Um, oh, thank you for that. So uh, let's look at those individual decisions. So one of the things that we talk about a lot is, is being focused and, and not getting distracted. And we were talking about this a little bit before we started, uh, but can you address that part of those individual decisions about not being, you know, like we say, don't chase a return, right? Um, rather focus on a particular type of asset you're going to invest in from a financial standpoint. But can you talk about focus in general and how, how important is that to grounding and centering yourself in this, you know, crazy world? That's a great question. Well, one of the things that can be a major obstacle to change is when we're pulled by temptation uh, to do things that aren't in our long run best interest, but feel good in the moment. And those things could be anything from, you know, making a really impulsive decision about, uh, you know, your investments to, um, you know, spending too much time on social media when you should be focused on your work to eating the wrong foods or not exercising regularly, right? So these are all different temptations that can make us less successful when it comes to achieving important goals. And, and there are a number of strategies we can use to try to overcome that challenge. But one that feels particularly relevant to your question is um, something called a commitment device. And it's very counterintuitive um, because it's basically imposing rules and restrictions on yourself the way someone else would usually impose them on you. Like we're, we're used to the state saying, no, you can't drive faster than this, or you can't take heroin. They're trying to protect you from yourself. Um, but it's strange to imagine protecting yourself from yourself. But that's what a commitment device does. So it's it's a tool that helps you set some constraints or restrictions. So maybe you limit your screen time by downloading an app that only allows you to spend so much time on certain sites that you, you don't want to be on or on your screen at all. Uh, or there's um, commitment devices in the domain of saving that I find really interesting that you can encourage other people to use and adopt yourself. Uh, one study I love shows that when people were offered a savings account that didn't allow you to remove money from it unless you had reached a predetermined date or savings goal that you self-selected. And that was a savings account with exactly the same interest rate as your standard savings account. Giving you access to that extra type of account that, that was essentially locked increased people's savings 80% year over year. Uh, so there's all sorts of ways we can we can use these kinds of strategies to think about you know, setting deadlines and making ourselves accountable to other people based on those deadlines, um, creating bank accounts that, that are separate from the usual, setting money there, cutting up the debit cards, trying to forget it exists, um, to cash commitments where you can literally put money on the line that you'll forfeit if you fail to achieve a goal and you name a referee and their websites like stick.com and BeMinder that let you set these up. And by creating those kinds of constraints and planning and figuring out, okay, this is what I want to achieve. I recognize that I might run into some temptations along the way or, or get off track. What if I put a price on my vice so that it'll be even less tempting when the moment comes and there'll be this, this really big, um, this really big reason not not to give in, that can help us stay focused. Interesting. So that, of course, would be the argument for the 401k not being able to be withdrawn until you're 59 and a half. You got it. You got it. That's a, well, that's a state sponsored, right? That's it. So, and it's like, it's interesting because commitment devices are like, we can do to for ourselves what yeah. policymakers yeah. wisely often I do. Would, for I, us. I would, I would much rather do it for myself than let the government do it. Uh, there to, you go. Yeah, it's very appealing. It's I'm very appealing. Of being, I'm the youngest of six children, so I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> well, you can um, tell yourself. You can exactly. tell your future well, self, and that's you know, what's I, delightful. Well, about I think that's somebody devices. like Tom Brady, right? I mean, why is Tom Brady still? I mean, why is he winning a Super Bowl at at in his 40s? Well, it's because he puts those types of he has rules. Right. And they're rules for him. They're not rules for anybody else. They're rules for him. And that's what makes him so strong and where, why he can handle that when a lot of football players, they're washed out at 32, 33, 34. He's in his, he's in his 40s. Um, who knows? He could go another decade. He could be our first 50 year old quarterback in the NFL. We don't know. Um, but it, it really does seem to be that he is um, so totally focused on what he's trying to achieve and what he's doing. He's willing to put those rules on. I, I can't imagine uh, Tom Brady, um, you know, having a pizza. I just cannot even fathom. He's got to do it sometimes. You got to give in to temptation every once in a while. He's, he's very, very focused. He's very, very focused. Yeah. And I admire that about him. Um, and, you know, we're not 
all easily that focus. And so I like the idea. One of the things I like is I like to have team members around me that help me focus as well so that they know what my goals are and they know what I'm trying to accomplish. And then they can actually, you know, there's some, there's some social uh, accountability. Yeah, absolutely. Accountability, accountability is so powerful. Um, you know, we talk about that in business all the time, having accountability, but having social accountability for your own self uh, can, can be really helpful. You know, when you talk about something and you're transparent about who you are and what you're doing, it's a little easier. You know, I always say, if you want to lose weight, tell people that you want to lose weight and have them hold you accountable, right? Because, uh, totally. because there is some social pressure there. Um, absolutely. Well, so, so, Let's go to uh, the next step. You've got a lot of, um, we've got a lot of social upheaval, a lot of political upheaval um, that's going on. What do, you, what do you do about that? I mean, just on a daily basis, are there things that you can do, things that we can do um, to, to keep us from getting, you know, spending too much time on, um, you know, on those uh, <laughs> social media, et cetera, but keep us from, from just getting wrapped up and overwhelmed by what's going on in the world? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, it's interesting. Um, some of the things that help most with maintaining our well being, especially in the face of stress, are, um, are, are not, not dealing with those problems directly, but rather just setting ourselves up for success by dealing with our own. Um, goals. So for instance, exercise is one of the best things we can do to reduce our stress, getting a lot of sleep, um, having a really strong social network and social supports, those kinds of things matter immensely. And so uh, I would sort of say just for as a win, 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 making sure you're focusing on, on that kind of wellness is really important when dealing with the kinds of turbulence we're facing right now. Uh, and, you know, it, it's actually kind of miraculous how much exercise and sleep matter for well-being. It blows my mind when I look at the studies. Um, but also, you know, if you, if you see that there are specific things that are triggers that are making it harder for you to focus, if it's social media or whatever, we talked about restrictions and setting constraints and thinking about what you want to put limits on and what isn't good for you and what isn't helping you you know, reach your goals, feel productive. You know, some people like being really well informed and reading all the headlines and that's good for them. And for other people, it's too much. And I think, you know, figuring out, right, it's not a one size fits all. What are the things that are um, fueling you to be successful and maybe have a social impact because you want to read about what's going on and contribute? And what are the things that are distracting and keeping you from being able to achieve at the your utmost capacity. So that's how, and we can set different limits for different people. I, I like that. So a few months ago, I found myself like going nuts on the social media stuff, you know, Apple news, all that kind of stuff. Right around January. <laughs> I think we all, seriously, I was say, seriously. We all kind of worry right, things. Right, right, right yeah. around that time. And I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to pick one news source that I trust and that's what I'm going to read. And I read it cover to cover. Okay. Yeah, great. That's a great I'm example a Street, for a commitment. A I'm limit. a Wall Street Journal guy. I trust the Wall Street Journal. I'm gonna. It's 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 middle of the road. It's not left to right. It's pretty middle of the road, and uh, and and I I just thought, you know what? I'm I trust these guys, so I'm gonna do this, and it's really had a huge impact on um, on my you know just well being and focus, and and I'm I'm not so distracted anymore. I'm not going crazy about everything that pops up in that news feed. Right. And instead I can go, okay, I can deal with this. 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 So th that I, I just, to, you know, uh, go along with what you're saying is that I've, I found that for myself to be very, very important to set those limits and set those patterns that I'm going to follow. And uh, I, I find that when I do that, and the other thing that I find is that when, when I've got a really good plan of action, so I know I'm going to only do you know, these things. So I'm going to, you know, I've got this target, say I'm, I do triathlon. So I've got a target of this triathlon. So I need to swim these days. I need to run these days. I need to bike these days. This is what I need to do. Then I, I get into that self-discipline. And it seems to me to make a whole world difference, just not just in my health, but in everything else that goes on around me. Do you find that? Absolutely. That There's absolutely um, strong evidence that when you, um, you know, feel good and healthy. And when things are going right and, and are on track in one part of your life, there's spillover effects. Um, 
I also just wanted to double click on what you said about the way you you structure that because that's so important too. And you know, I think it's pretty intuitive, but there is also great research supporting how important it is to make those really concrete plans about what you want to achieve, not just abstract, you know, I want to run a triathlon, but okay, what does that mean? each day, you know, on Monday at this time, this is what I have to, you know, these, this is the workout I need to get in on Tuesday at this time. And, and by breaking that down one, it makes it less overwhelming because it's in the bite-sized pieces of the things that you need to achieve to, uh, get, get through your goal, but also by creating the specific, specific plans, you think through obstacles, you make a firmer commitment and you're less likely to flake out and more likely to actually Mm -hmm. follow through. Um, so that kind of if then planning and, and creating, they're called implementation intentions and have been studied by NYU's um, Peter Golwitzer as just so powerful as a way to make sure you, you will achieve your goals. I, I love that. So um, Katie Milkman, if, if you will, just a few final words, uh, two or three things, just specific things that we can do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that you think will help us be more centered and, and, and deal with all this volatility going on. Find the things that you really, really enjoy doing and make sure you're making time for them so that you, you know, even when the world (laughs) is giving us lemons, you're getting some lemonade out of, well, maybe not a, maybe not making lemonade out of the world's lemons, but you're still having something good going on. So make sure you find time for the fun, Um, build those social supports so that you have um, strong friendships uh, and, and role models to look to and, and times when they're tough, you have someone to talk to about it, who you respect and to deal with things with um, and, and make plans to do the things that matter to you. Make sure that you have concrete if then plans. This is when I will do it uh, for, you know, and here's how I'm going to make sure I do. I, I love that. So actionable items from a professor. I love that. Uh, we don't always get that. So I love, <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for being so practical. So Katie Monkman, author of How to Change, coming out. Very excited about your new book coming out, Katie. And uh, if I've got this right, katiemilkman.com. Is that right? You got it. The only important part is for listeners, it's with a Y, like Katy Perry. And st- <laughs> so Katie Milkman with a Y.com. Y- Milk- Milkman, I think we got that one. That one's easy. Although I always have to tell the pizza delivery person, you know, just like the guy who delivers the milk, they don't believe me. <laughs> well, I, most people never known what a milkman was, right? I mean, I'm at least old enough to have had a milkman when I was little. <laughs> Um, and and it's, it's, it's great. It's not, it's not Katie the milkman. It's Katie milkman. So we, we want to be clear with that. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Um, this, these are just really tough times. And uh, I encourage you to listen to this podcast again and, and watch it again, because uh, there's some, Katie just came up with some just a really good, solid things that we can do, really focus on that strategy, stay focused, stay centered. And when you do, you're always going to make way more money and pay with less tax. I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.